XTC by ReaperScan. Getting started. In this video, we're going to walk you through some of the connectors and the control buttons that you will be using as you use your XTC. The XTC has five external connections. There's the 12 volt DC charger port used for charging. There's the USB port that is not used in the field, it's used in the service center. The B and C connector provides an AV out signal that's used occasionally. The rugged LIMO connector is used for goggles and for direct wiring to monitors. First, charge your XTC by plugging in the 12 volt charger. The yellow light flashes while charging and goes to solid yellow when fully charged. Using a coin, you may remove the battery from your XTC. The battery may be removed and charged separately. This step is seldom required. Charging the battery inside the XTC works best. The XTC may be used while the battery is being charged. Always keep a charger with you in case the day is longer than planned so you can charge and scan cows at the same time. A B and C to RCA adapter can be used to connect the XTC to certain monitors. This can be used for a second monitor or to a television set. The LIMO connector is used to direct wire the XTC to the ReaperScan monitor or to goggles. This is a rugged connector you'll use quite a bit. The XTC's wireless sender is compatible with the ReaperScan 2.0 monitor. The two devices must be on the same channel. Now let's take a look at the XTC's control buttons. There's the on off, the cine loop, the freeze button, then there's the plus and minus buttons that are used for zooming in and out and other features, the menu button, and the exam button. Let's start using the control buttons by turning the power on. Press the green button until the light comes on. Now your power is on and to turn it off we're going to press and hold for about three seconds and then release and the power will shut off. When you're outside on a bright sunny day make sure you double check that you have successfully turned off the machine. Turn your XTC back on and we'll scroll through the four preset exams. Exams A, B, C, and D. In active scanning mode, the plus and minus buttons allow you to zoom in and zoom out. In this example, we're zooming in from the 22 centimeter depth to the 11 centimeter depth. In active scanning mode, press the snowflake button to freeze the image. Now press the cine loop button to allow you to save, read, and play back images. In this situation, press plus to pick a new location to store the image and press menu to save the image. Now press the cine loop button again to read a stored image or press again to play back the previous 255 frames. Press the cine loop button one more time to pause and then press the plus or minus keys to scroll through the frames individually. This is a useful feature for teaching other people about ultrasound. Now we'll review the menu key functions. Press menu. The first function we see is gain. We're going to use the plus and minus keys to increase and decrease the gain. Increasing the gain brightens the image. Decreasing the gain darkens the image. We'll now press exam or freeze to toggle to the next menu setting. Use the plus and minus keys again to change the dynamic range. Increasing the dynamic range darkens the image. Decreasing the dynamic range brightens the image. The darker image has better resolution but is harder to see in the bright sunlight. So you'll have to experiment to find the dynamic range that you prefer. Now press exam to toggle to the near gain. Increasing the near gain brightens the near field. Press exam and increasing the far gain brightens the far field or you may want to decrease it as we are doing in this scenario. Press exam and we'll go to the frequency settings. There are four frequency settings. The higher frequency settings, the four and the five megahertz settings are for lesser depth settings like the 11 and 15. And the lower frequency settings, the 2.0 and 2.5, are for the greater depth settings like the 22 centimeter depth. Press the exam button and go to the frame rate settings feature. There are four frame rate settings available 
Increasing the number here gives you a better image but a slower frame rate. Most people scanning cattle prefer a frame rate of 1, which has minimal to no hesitation. It's a personal preference scenario here. Press exam to go to the IP setting. IP stands for image processing. This is an important feature. IP1 is used a considerable amount of the time. It has a brighter image. IP2 is used when possible. There's a better resolution, but a darker image. Press exam to go to the IE function, which stands for edge enhancement. It's not that significant. Now press exam again to select comp, which stands for compression curve. The higher the comp setting, the better the image resolution, but it will be darker. You'll probably settle on a comp setting of 4 to 6 for the best image in your environment. Press exam to go to the focus setting. The focus concentrates the image processing more in one area of the scan area. Use the plus and minus keys to get the optimum image in the depth of scan that you are using. For example, short bred cattle, 60 day pregnancies, you may use a depth of 5 centimeters. Press exam and go to image. Image orientation reverses the orientation of the image on the display. By touching the tip of the probe, here we can see that the image when set to left shows up on the left first. Press the plus button. We switched it to R. Now it shows up on the right. Let's switch back to the left. This is most people's preference. Now we're going to press the menu button to go to the left menu. So the left menu starts off with language. Most of us watching this video are going to want to have the English language. We can now press the exam, go to the TV mode. There's the two TV modes, NTSC, which is used primarily in North America, and PAL, that's used in Europe primarily. So pick the signal that works with your monitor, probably NTSC. That's what works with the ReaperScan 2.0 monitor. Let's go to status. The status here is on. That means when we get back to active scanning mode, we will see indicators like the wireless feature. Wireless, we have on right now. It allows us to talk to the 2.0 monitor. If we're using goggles, you can turn it off by pressing the plus or minus button. Let's scroll down now to channel. It's important that the channel that's selected here syncs with the monitor that you are using. So you've got eight channel settings. There we just changed channel seven by using the plus button. So we'll go down to Sharbright, Character Bright setting. We're going to increase that. That will brighten up the grid. So for indoor use where the grid isn't that important, use 128. Go back to 178 if you're going to use the grid outside. So down to grid setup. There are three grid settings. Zero for no grid. One for the square grid and two is a dot grid. Now we're just going to press the menu button there again, go to the dot grid to show you what it looks like. The dots are kind of difficult to see. Let's go back. Most people that use a grid use the square grid. So back to, to number one for the regular grid and press the exam again to go to spacing. So here we see 20, just changed it to 10. There's a 10 millimeter, one centimeter grid. It's quite busy. Let's go back now and we'll put a uh, 20 millimeter, two centimeter grid on. There we are, that's what we're more used to using. To save an exam setting as one of the four presets, press and hold exam button for five seconds. A is flashing. Now use the plus button to go over to C. Press exam again. Yes, we want to save it here. And then press it one more time and it's saved in exam C and we're back in active scanning mode. The ReaperScan XTC produces a high quality diagnostic image when set correctly. We see that here with this set of 90 day twins. Your ReaperScan XTC will come with four preset settings. One of them will be similar to this setting. If you wish to change those, please review this video, read your manual, and if necessary, give us a call at the ReaperScan office at 877-890-2411. Thank you.